practice have y'all really honed in on at practice so far and how would you say that's gone yeah i mean we've had two great practices um I, but this group's been a pretty good practice group all year you know so um you know to say that we've had two great practices it still has to correlate to the game um because i do think this group uh has a spirit about it, itself in practice that um you know, we've also had some guys that aren't great practice players and they go out in a game and, you know, do damage um, in a positive way. So uh, we have had good practices. They've been very competitive, um, more live stuff than we've done since I've been at Arkansas, uh, guarding the ball full court one on one, guarding the ball uh, on the wing, 45 degree angle one on one. Um, we have not done any of our breakdown drills. Uh, we have done no station work. Um, you know, I, I, I mentioned it the other night on the radio show that, that we, uh, have added our opportunity break and, and our open offense to try to get the ball to move from side to side and get more people involved. And, um, and then the last piece of all this, which won't be decided until probably Saturday is, is what the, what the rotation looks like and, and, um, you know, who starts and all those things. And, um, so that's kind of where it is. How did TB respond to to playing the other day, and how's his ankle? How's he looked at, on his ankle last couple TB, days? TB has not practiced. Uh, what's today, Wednesday? So he has not practiced on Monday or Tuesday. Uh, he's been with the trainer, and um, you know we'll see how he is. You know, later today when when we're about to practice, I would anticipate him jumping and doing some stuff today. Um, probably, well, not probably won't do anything live. So if most of our practice is live, then that means he he won't be involved in much. Jackson. Sorry. Um, yeah, I guess you kind of uh, answered this question, but how much of when you're thinking about the new rotation, is it open competition in, you know, practice? And how much of it is kind of you, you know, going off a feel of what you've seen in the game so far? I think a little of both, especially when we've gotten more competition in the last two days. And it's also just about, you know, is somebody to somebody not have an opportunity as opposed to someone that, 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 that has had an opportunity. So obviously defensively, I mean, um, you know, not up to the standards of what we've had the last nine years. So um, something's got to give there. And, um, you know, we've had some great games of ball movement. Um, and played really well in those. And we've had some other games of not good ball movement. So something's got to give there. We've added uh, some stuff that we've done in the past offensively to try to get the ball uh, to move a little bit better. Um, and, and certainly we're doing everything we can from a defensive standpoint as well. Surprisingly, our pick and roll defense, uh, which is an area that most teams talk about at all levels, really struggling. We have not struggled there. Um, so. It's guarding the man, keeping him in front. It's defending three, um, you know, and and playing with a. You know, we need to play with the personality that we've played with in the past, and and uh, we've done it at times, and at times we haven't. And there's five guys that'll play with the personality we want. Um, it's just we're trying to find who those five are, but they'll 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 be five. I don't <laughs> I don't know when it'll be, um, and I don't know if that equates to a win. Um, but we're not we're not going to we're not going to play defense like we have um, of late. And after the Oklahoma game, you mentioned kind of the like guys falling over on layups, impacting maybe some transition defense. I'm wondering, are there any other ways where maybe some struggles on offense have negatively impacted you on the defensive end? Or is, is that kind of the main one? And then you just have the unable to stop the dribble penetration and stuff. Well, I think anytime you talk about in in our sport, because it's not football, where we're, you know, where a new group of players is coming on the field, um, you know, for offense and defense. I mean, our the flow of our game, everything affects our defense affects our offense. Our offense affects our defense. Shot selection would be the number one thing that affects a team's um, defense. Um, that's the number one spot you start with. And then the second spot you start with when you're asking about offense affecting defense is your lack or your positive offensive rebounding. <laughs> so, I mean, we got some guys that haven't gotten an offensive rebound 
Um, all I mean, if I took Bob Holt, me, Curtis, if we all went out there and played, uh, I don't know, 200 minutes, a ball would fall in Bob Holt's lap. Um, and he'd get an offensive rebound. It would. If, if I played at 59 years old, a ball would somehow bounce to me uh, off an offensive rebound. It just, it just would. Curtis. Coach, with the with the on ball defense, is it a is it a mentality thing of just you you got to sit down and keep your man in front? Or are you seeing some common themes in terms of why it might be a problem area? Yeah. So Curtis, I think there's several things when you talk about guarding the ball. It's uh, habits. You know what habits do you have prior to the last four, five months or whatever you've been here? It's uh, mobility, lateral, quick speed, footness. You know, foot speed laterally. Um, and then there's a mentality part and then there's a help part, you know, like it's not just the guy on the ball. It's, are you in a gap, you know, and then, and you know what, you got to be in a gap and you got to take away the three <laughs> that that's what has to happen for a good defense. You don't not be in a gap because you're worried about a three point shooter. And then you don't say that you're in the gap and then you can't get to a three point shooter. It's called multiple defensive efforts. Um, and that's what you have to do to be a really, really good defensive team. Um, and that's what we're trying to clear up, work on, get better at, all those things. I know a lot of things go into to tempo from game to game, but just looking at the the Kim Palm numbers over the course of the last few years, playing a little bit slower than you have maybe in the past. Yeah, well, that I, I mean, I hate to cut you off, Curtis, but that's not by design. I mean, if I figured I would love it if you guys could point out one time where I said, hold up. Let's 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 run a half court play. I mean, we want to play with pace, not Saturday. Every game we want to play with pace. Um, I said it in my press conference when I was hired here, however many years, like what you got in order to play with pace, you got to run the floor, you got to ball handle, and that's all on the coaching staff. I mean, all the issues that a team has, they're all, you know, it always falls back to the to the coaches um trying to convey the issue it's it's not the players it's 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 uh yeah we want to run to answer your question we would like more fast break points we would like uh to score in transition more than we have scotty yeah eric um we talked to Jalen graham a few minutes ago he said you've you guys have implemented a 0.5 rule uh offensively how have guys taken to that so far and how can it help well, you guys can evaluate that on Saturday. Who holds it more than 0.5? Um, now that he's told you our San Antonio Spurs rule of 0.5, um, I never brought it up. So um, it's good that it's good when a player uses uh, coaching verbiage. So I'm I'm really happy that Jalen recognized that. Um, I'm glad he shared it with you guys. Now everybody can watch and see who holds it more than 0.5. Um, I mean, in all honesty, it's just meant to try to get the ball to, to, to move more. Um, and I mean, it, it's a little bit, you know, it's hard to not hold the ball more than 0.5, but we certainly don't want 16 dribbles on one possession. Bob. Uh, I've got, I've got one more, Mike, if that's okay. Go ahead. Uh, Eric, in your experience, what does it take for a team to form a personality or an identity? Oh, boy. Great question, Scotty. Um, look, we talked to our team about, um, you know, some some past guys that have been here. Um, you know, I think some guys, you know, I look back and, and, and without name, naming names, one guy had an incredible year for us, and it clicked for him two games into SEC play. Um, I vividly remember when, all right, I understand the defensive philosophy. I understand what we're trying to do on offense. Let's go do it. And that players had a great career or a great year here and, and has moved on and playing at the highest level. So um, I think there's – you know, some guys get it the last game. Some guys get it after they leave here. Um, and some guys never get it. So I don't think there's, you know, I mean, I would love to tell you, oh, yeah, 
It happens after 12 games. I mean, Chuck Daly used to say you get to know your team 50 games into an NBA 82-game season. So we certainly don't know our team. Um, some teams in college, um, you know, those guys haven't figured out quicker. I don't know. but um, And we've lost some to some really good teams. I mean, you look at the records of the teams we've lost to. I don't care about their Ken Palm numbers or – uh, whatever. I'm just saying that, that, that the teams we've lost to, I watched Memphis the other day going to Texas A&M and Texas A&M has a lot of returning players, basically their whole roster. They're really well coached. And uh, that was a true home game for A&M and Memphis played phenomenal. And I think Texas A&M is one of the best teams in the country. And so uh, North Carolina is a heck of a basketball team. And Oklahoma's probably went into the season the most underrated team in college basketball. Bob. Yeah. Hey, Eric. Yeah, last time I looked, Greensboro was seven and one or something and one, whatever. So they're they're pretty good too. Um, hey, before I forget, Nate, Nate wanted me to ask you this. Um, with it being finals week, has that impacted practice at all? Or is you have, have you had any issues with guys being able to practice or zero? Okay. That's good. Um, <laughs> that's not a horrible answer. Nothing. We we haven't even asked you about Lipscomb yet. What what what's your what's your take on those guys? Uh yeah. So uh, Lipscomb, uh, you know, 49th in the country and made threes, um, nine a game. So you know, we got to defend the three. Um, 58th in the country in three point attempts. They took they average 26 uh, per game. It's a pretty high number. Um, you know, number zero, McGinnis leads him in uh three point percentage. Um, you know, he he can play the the two, three, four. Uh he's 42% from three on six attempts a game or 5.6 attempts a game. And um, you know, 60% of their shots are threes. Uh 30% of their shots are mid-range. Um, you know, so that would you know, they're a really good offensive team. And then, you know, we, we talked to Jay on there. Last. He says his back's feeling better. And, um, you know, I thought he played, you know, pretty, some pretty decent minutes the other day against OU. Kind of where do you think Jalen is? And, and you've talked about giving guys more opportunities. Is he one of those guys you might be talking about? Or just kind of what, what are you thinking about for Jalen moving forward? Yeah, Jalen, I mean, I thought he had a really good summer. He worked hard. Then obviously the back issue and, and you know, our three biggest – you know, segments of games were really the Bahamas just because we played three games in three nights. It, it would have been great to have a healthy Jalen Graham then because anytime you get to the second and third game, especially after a double overtime um, loss and you don't have a, a player that can score um, and, and then rebound. I mean, I, you know, I think that, that not having Jalen in, in, uh, in Nassau affected us in games two and three, maybe not in game one. And, and um, certainly a great offensive talent. I thought he did a great job of, um, you know, he got beat off the dribble a couple times and, and had some great blocks uh, because he stuck with the play. I think he understands what the expectations are. Um, you know, certainly getting him back in the fold and, and he, you know, he's got to continue to, to, to work his way back into better physical condition just because he had the time off. I think that's affected him a little bit from a, conditioning win standpoint you think it could be a, a plus for you moving forward yeah I, mean, I think a lot of the guy you know I, I mean I hope that all you know everybody on our roster can be a plus for us that you know some guys that are scoring at a high level they got to defend better and some guys that are defending pretty good got to got to give us a little more on offense so I'm hopeful that you know that that, that we can improve uh both individually uh and that everybody can somehow contribute some way shape or form this, this is your one time to go do a play in north little rock um the crowds down there are usually pretty pretty rabid no matter who you're playing or raucous or whatever maybe rabid's a bad word <laughs> but uh what, what what are your thoughts on playing down there and the the reception you guys get yeah unbelievable we love playing there um have not played good historically last year we played good but i think the the, the program was not uh, 11 and 9 um, in their last segment of games there. So you add last year, maybe we're 12 and nine. I could be wrong statistically, but um, we need to play like we did last year, which was uh, great energy, 
great enthusiasm, uh, great desire to play in front of a fan base that doesn't get to see us. There's going to be um, kids going to that game that are never going to come to Bud Walton. You got to understand that. You got to respect that. Um, you got to understand that there's people that only watch games on TV and this is their one opportunity. Um, I think it's a great game for us. The only thing that I wish is I wish this was a neutral site game because it's three and a half hours away. It's not a neutral site game. Um, it is counted as a home game for us, um, which obviously we got the home crowd and all that. Um, but there are some other programs that have games similar to this that are counted as uh, neutral site games and not home games. So um, we got to go defend our home. It's a home game um, with the NCAA. So we got to we got to go play well in a home game. It'll kind of be a homecoming for for uh, for Devo and and, and Layden Block or being from that area. What what are your thoughts maybe on them coming coming back to their home area to play? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that that you know there's excitement, there's extra family members that are able to come. Um, you know, you don't want any distractions. Um, you, you know, because it's it's a different environment. You know, usually when you go on a road trip and you go out to dinner, nobody, you know, the, you know, fans aren't asking for pictures and autographs. And when you're in the hotel, but when we go to, you know, when we go play this game and we go to eat on Friday night, there's going to be fans that are coming up and you, you got, we want to try to eliminate as many distractions as you, as you can. Um, I don't go speak anywhere else on a road trip. I'm going to, I'm going to speak on Friday uh, to a group. So all of us have to understand that this is a game. We've got to stay focused. We've got to uh, get ready uh, to compete in a game that's, uh, you know, that's a one-time game in front of a, a, a what will be a sold-out building, we would assume, and and uh, a, a very, very important game for us, in my opinion. You know, there's been a lot of complaints that this game hadn't been streamed, available on streaming in the past, but, but it's going to be. They worked it out. How, how glad are you that – not just the people at the game, but people around the world, you know, can watch it. Well, Bob, if we play really good, I'll be really, really happy that this thing got streamed and worked out that, that it can be viewed by a bunch of people. If we don't play well, then I probably wish the streaming issues would have continued to be honest with you, but no, I think it's great that they figured it out. All right, coach. Thanks. Appreciate your time.